First question comes from Steve Popper. Hey, Tom. You mentioned Wednesday installing, you know, the offensive and defensive systems. Um, just wondering, do you come in here and install a system you've succeeded with before, or do you fit it to the personnel you have here now? And, and I guess do you have to learn more about these players to know what you have? Well, there's a base that you, you have that you believe in, but you also want to study the team that you have and what they're good at, and you're going to adapt and add things that they're doing well. But your system never really stays the same. It's constantly evolving. A lot of it's based on personnel in the league, how things are, are going in the league. So um, you're trying to figure out the things that are going to give you the best chance to win. But as I mentioned on the first day, the important thing for us is to establish the uh, conditioning part, the discipline part, and also uh, going over all the fundamentals again and, and starting from a zero base. We're, we're building a foundation. All right. Next question comes from Mark Berman. Uh, hey, Tom. Hey, Mark. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I imagine uh, you're, you've been watching the conference finals and just what your impressions were and how happy you are for Jimmy Butler and how he's really reinvigorated Miami. And does Miami play with the type of fundamentals and, and, and intelligence that, that, that you feel that your teams have in the past? Well, I, first of all, I have great respect for the, the Heat organization, uh, the way they play, what Pat Riley's done there and Eric Spolstra. I have great ownership and Mickey Harrison and, and they've done it for a long time. I think the continuity has been important for them. Uh, they've evolved as the game has evolved. Uh, but the, the things that they believe in have withstood the test of time, their fundamentals, their intensity, the, their work ethic. Uh, those are all uh, Pat Riley trademarks. And, you know, the, I know Nick fans are familiar with that from when he, Pat was here. Uh, so it's a credit to him. Uh, but, and as far as Jimmy goes, I'm thrilled for him. You know, it's, uh, it's a great story. It's a guy that was drafted 30th uh, and made himself better each and every year and continues to do so. Uh, even now, uh, uh, an established all-star, he still works incredibly hard. He plays very, very unselfishly. He plays to win. He's not about statistics. I knew that from the start with him. I never envisioned him being this good. I always felt he would be a good player, uh, but he's made himself into a superstar uh, because of his intelligence, his talent, his work ethic. Uh, you know, obviously, I think he's learned a ton over his career. He's, he's a guy that constantly studies, and he brings out not only the best in himself, but the best in his teammates. Ian Begley with the next question. Sorry about that. Coach, can you hear me? I can. Okay, thanks. Um, you, I know you coached under Jeff, but you mentioned Pat. Did he, or the way he went about his business, goes about his business, does that have any influence on you as a coach, or did it as a young Oh, uh, A ton, a ton. And I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, the impact that he had, you know, obviously on Jeff. And Jeff also worked for a number of other great coaches, uh, I mean, you, you talk about a Don Nelson, a Rick Pitino, um, John McLeod, uh, all those guys. And he, I think he, and he, the way he studied the game. But, you know, when I came here uh, the first time, I had come from Philadelphia and it was just so different. He was so far ahead of his time. Uh, and Jeff he carried over a lot of those things and also added some other things that he picked up along the way. And so, uh, you know, I have great respect for that. And, and the fact that, you know, Pat did it in L.A. He, he, you know, he won a championship there, championships there. And then, you know, he got the Knicks to the doorstep. And then, of course, to do it several times in Miami, he's rebuilt the, the, that organization three or four times. You know, uh, he's at the top of my list. And, you know, he's been great to me over the years. And uh, I've taken a lot of things that he's said to me. I've watched the, their organization very closely. Um, you know, you understand what their core values are. Uh, and I'm happy for him. Steph Bondi with the next question. Steph, 
Staff, you have to unmute. You got me? Sorry. I always have trouble with that. Um, I, w I wanted to ask about the uh, the two young point guards, Dennis Smith Jr. and Frank Nilekina. Um With Dennis, he, he um, obviously struggled a lot last year. I, w I was wondering what you saw there and um, what he can do to turn it around. And, and then with Frank, um, there's been some debate over the last couple of years over whether he's a point guard or he should play off the ball. Um, and I was wondering your opinion on that as well. Yeah, and it's early on, so we're three days in. Uh, so I'm getting to know both guys. I like what they've done so far. Uh, they got to continue to work. There's oftentimes ups and downs for young players. There's, uh, you know, there's a learning curve they have to go through. Uh, some experiences will be better than others. Uh, they both have had some good moments in the league. Uh, you want to build a consistency, and how do you get there? You have to do it through your work. You have to learn from the experiences, and you have to be disciplined. And so hopefully we can get there. This is a, a very important offseason for both players. Next question comes from Mike Vorkanoff. Hey, Tom. Uh, hey, Mike. Question for you about your coaching staff. Uh, one, are you done hiring or will you be adding more coaches to the staff? And then two, how do you see deploying that you guys, uh, the guys that you have at this point in terms of like player development versus in-game preparation and just how you think those uh, that'll work for the staff you have? Well, I, I'm thrilled with our staff and we have a number of uh, coaches that are, are terrific teachers and that was critical for me. Um, so obviously, and you know, when we're talking about uh, a Johnny Bryant, a Kenny Payne, uh, a Woody, uh, uh, Andy Greer, they're going to be involved in all aspects of uh, of the organization in terms of player development, game planning, uh, their ideas, their thoughts. Uh, you know, it's we have a, a lot of work to do, and uh, all of them have had great experiences. Um, so I'm excited about that part. As far as hiring more guys, we do have a few other guys that we will we'll be adding along the way. Um, so we just have to be patient and work our way through that. But uh, I'm thrilled with the staff that we do have. Next question comes from Alex Mangini. Hey, Coach. So uh, in going over the film from last year of this team, uh, what were some of the encouraging things that you took away, particularly from the young guys uh, that you're gonna look to build on this year? Yeah, uh, and like anything, there's always, when you're going through film, there's, I try to pick out some games that I thought that, you know, were good wins and what, what did you, you know, what were you able to take from that? And then also to go th through some of the games where, that were, where they had tough losses, you know, and, what did you take away from that? And then what, what were the best combinations that worked? Uh, what were the things that they did well? What were the things they didn't do so well? Um, so, but last year was last year, you know, and, and that would be a normal process. I think even if I had been here, that would be what I would have done is to go through the, the season uh, before. And then once you do that, it's all about generating new ideas for the upcoming season. Uh, so you'll take some things that worked well, uh, then we'll add to it over the course of the summer. We'll generate a lot of new ideas. Uh, we'll formulate the game plan and also develop the playbook for the upcoming season. All right, we're going to go back to Ian Bagley. Hey, Tom, just to go back to what Steph was saying earlier about, you know, Dennis Smith Jr., Franklin Lakina. Seems like there's a few players on the roster, as there are in every NBA roster, got younger guys who maybe still have some untapped potential. As a head coach and you know, also with your staff, do you take that as like a challenge to try to get, you know, the best out of a player like that who maybe hasn't fulfilled what outsiders see as his full potential? Yeah, but I think it's you know, it, obviously player development is critical, but also you can't lose sight of the team development. So. Uh, it's not only the challenge of the player bringing the best out of himself, but also how does he bring the best out of the team? And the team has to be very high. It's got to be at the top of the checklist. Everyone has to sacrifice for the good of the team. Winning is the most important thing. That's why you're here. And so how does everyone fit together? And how do you bring the best out of each other? So that's an important thing that we're studying. How hard do, do people work? Do they play for each other? Um, those are big factors in winning. Do they know when to shoot? Do they know when to pass? 
Um, and, and we see that. We see him, you know, what, what wins in the playoffs. I mean, when you begin, you have to think about the end and what's going to be necessary if ultimately, you, you know, you, you do become a, a playoff team. And so you start off and you, you know it starts with your fundamentals, and that's where we are. We're going to go back to Steph Bondi. Hey, Coach. Um, I think it, I heard you on the Woj pod say um, that you learned from your time in Minnesota and you didn't want to be hold the dual role of president and coach anymore. Um, but how much say do you have – are you going to have in building this roster? Obviously, you know Leon and Wes really well. How much input do you think you're going to have into those decisions? Well, I think, you know, as a head coach, the only thing you want is is a voice. And, you know, I think uh, a lot was made of, you know, a president's title. But I also, I had a general manager and I had an assistant general managers that did a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff that a normal general manager would do. So, um, you know, I think that experience did help me. Uh, in a lot of ways. And uh, I think the important thing for me is to just be able to have a voice. And uh, I've known Leon and Wes for a long time. So uh, they've asked my opinion on a, on a number of things. Doesn't mean that they're always going to do what I ask them to do. But uh, I think there's a trust factor there. So I do think that's important. All right, we're going to go back to Mark Berman. Yeah, Tom. Um... What uh, is like one of the big, bigger revelations so far from these OTAs? And also getting back to Jimmy, uh, you know, when you watch Jimmy, you know, help this Miami team possibly get to the finals tonight, does it make you like shake your head like, wow, it could have happened in Minnesota and, you know, wonder about what if? Uh, well, as far as the, the Jimmy piece, obviously thrilled for him. Uh, I, I never worked backwards. It's, you know, Minnesota was Minnesota. And now I'm the, there's a new chapter. It's New York. And that's really what I'm, uh, I think about, you know, all the time. It's, it's, you know, it's all con consuming, you know, how can we get better? How can we improve? Uh, how do we bring the best out of the group? Uh, so that's exciting. It's challenging. I'm with a great group of people that, that I work with. So, uh, I'm looking forward to this challenge. Uh, and as far as, you know, what we've gotten from the this experience so far, one, it's been great for us to be around our players, just to get to know them, them to get to know us, uh, a chance to take a look at things that we think will be good uh, and work on them. And so that's been a positive. And the other thing is uh, you realize, I know for me, just in Johnny Bryant was in, in the bubble with Utah, obviously, but just that, that whole experience of um, you know, being in a bubble, uh, you know, we've been there a very short time and it's, it's not an, an easy thing to do. That's why I think whoever wins this championship this year, it'll be a, an, an incredible accomplishment. We have time for two more questions, guys. Uh, the next one comes from Mike Vorkanoff. Tom, um, with Mitchell Robinson, how do you uh, how do you envision using him uh, both on offense and on defense? I mean, offensively, there's he's he's been posting a lot of videos of him handling the ball, shooting threes. I don't know if that's what you want him to add to his game or not, but how do you envision him in your offense and your defense? Well, I think you know what he did last year was put a lot of pressure on the rim. He's an incredible athlete, uh, but we you know we don't want to put a ceiling on him. We want him to continue to work on all aspects of his game and develop. And uh, he spent some time here earlier in the summer and we'll ho we're hopeful that, you know, we can get him back and, and get to work with him so he can build on those skills. Uh, but obviously he's a very important part of this team. And our last question comes from Steve Popper. Hey, Tom, just, um, you talked a little bit about developing uh, guys like Frank and Dennis. Um, I'm just wondering if, if they have such different skill sets. If you see anything in them, you know, comparing maybe to a player you've had before and kind of feel like they can reach, are the guys you, you kind of look to them as examples of what they can be? Yeah, you know, I, I never really like to do that. I think each player is different. Um, and, and of course, you, oftentimes you, people tend to measure guys that have finished their careers and say, well, this guy could be that. 
and they forget it took that guy a long time to get to where they were at the end of their career. So I think with every player, you look at the things they do well and you try to build off of that and try to add things to their game. And that's why I think the offseason is so important because you could zero in on those things and help build confidence. And I think that's where your confidence comes from. Your confidence comes from your preparation. It's your willingness to work on those things and, and see that you can be successful doing them. But you never want to take a, a guy away from what his strengths are. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we'll speak to you guys next week.